OG, you've been watching this for a long time, type OG in the chat. If you haven't watched Ben Brown before, type new in the chat as well. Uh, let us know where you're watching from. I'm super excited to have a good friend of mine on here today, all the way from the UK. Uh, you could be in the UK too, I don't know, but we're excited. He's gonna be cutting a shag for you guys. Uh, here is my good pal, Ben Brown. What's up, buddy? Hey, Matt, how's it going, brother? How are uh, it's you? going good, super excited to have you on here. Uh, we've definitely been, um, you know, just talking a lot more. So it's yeah. it's exciting to, uh, you inspire me uh, to become better at haircutting and it's just, you know, it's fun talking to you and always having you on here. So uh, why don't you just, I'm gonna throw you up on the screen. I'm gonna be watching the chat guys. Um, please ask questions. If you have a question, type Q, put in your question. That way I can see it in the chat. Otherwise just have fun talking to each other, listening to Ben, uh, you know, and learning. He's going to, he's going to be sharing, his, uh, sharing some cool stuff with you. So uh, I'll just let you take it away, pal. And you just do your thing. I'll jump in every once in a while, uh, but, right. but have some fun. All right. Absolutely. Firstly, thank you so much to Matt for having me. Sorry, we're late. It was just a technical issue. Um, that I had to, um, we were struggling to get my webcam to work, so I'm actually using the camera on my laptop. So sorry for the view of me, which is probably scaring a lot of you. But hello to everybody from all over the world who are here today with Free Sound Education. My name is Ben Brown, and I am here to take you through a shag haircut. So let's make a start, okay? So thank you Pivot Point and Free Sound Education for supplying me with a great mannequin hat. I've managed to dress my mannequin just very simply into a middle parting for now. But if the my client wore it on the side, wherever they wore it or whichever hair growth pattern was dictating where it should be, I would tend to work my shag on where it wanted to sit natural. I'm not about trying to wrestle with hair growth patterns. It's all about putting them in where it's going to be easiest for the client to start. So we went central here. So if I just spin my beautiful model around, isn't she great? One of the great things about using a, a mannequin as model is no makeup artist is needed as well. It's always good. Outline of the house, the length. We're only focusing on the natural fall of that outline as it falls towards the face. We're going to focus and position all our energies on our internal shape, and then we're going to come to the outline at the end. So let's make a start. The thickness of your section is quite important. I tend to start with just under an inch in my thickness. This just means that the recession of the hairline isn't a problem when my section comes around. Can everyone see me okay? It's not going static -y. I think I think it's good, Ben. Uh, it just got a little stuttery for me uh, on this end, but I think you're good now. Okay, guys, I'm so sorry. Lots of false starts today. Uh, equal moisture. I mean, I if I'm working with hair that is below, let's say, a 2C in its curl pan, I tend to keep the moisture levels really high. So I keep the tension levels really, really high. The only time I really vary the tension or the moisture levels is when I'm working around a difficult hairline or a crown. The main reason for this, guys, is when you're working with an area like a crown or a hairline, and it's jumping around everywhere. I kind of want to see what it's going to do and I want it to do what it wants to do. So if I'm pulling the section here, making sure we catch up, is, is it gone fuzzy again? No, I think you're good. Oh, come on technology, be my friend today. <laughs> have I got you all or have, have I lost you all? I see you. Here, let me see this coming back in. He knew he was going before you guys did. So I'm still on here. Uh, let me see if I can get him back. Um, we'll have him call back in. Um, hang in with us, guys. This is definitely, you know, weird technical issues today. Let's see. Let me add him to the boat. Are you there? <laughs> yes, it is freezing. 
All right. That happens sometimes is true. Thank you very much, Peggy. Appreciate that. All right, I'm going to put some... What's up, Carly? Good to see you. All right, he's calling back in. Let's see what we got. Uh, what's up? It's so jumpy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, so, Ben. We're supposed to... Do you have a tr do you have a stand for your phone? Uh sure. Yeah. It's gonna sound crazy, but so well. so sometimes the phone that. works even better. So um why don't you click that link through Instagram uh on your phone and then put that up on a tripod. Let's see. We'll give that a shot. What's up, Shelly? Good to see you. Thank you, Lucy. I appreciate it. This is brilliant. Thanks, Ed. Appreciate that. It is. This is real life stuff. Honestly, we've, we've been doing this since one o'clock. So uh, we've been going back and forth. Trying to get this to work. Little uh, tip for you guys. Wi-Fi doesn't work that well. If you want to be live, it doesn't work. Um, and you need a little capture card. Um, it's just a little technology tip. If you want to do lives, you got to have a little capture card because then it reads in certain software. So these are things that, um, you know, I've been doing these live videos for a long time and you just got to keep collecting technology stuff. But he'll call in soon. I think his phone will work better. Honestly, if you're going to go live, phones work better than computers. So that's right, Anthony. He is. You are right. Shauna, first time watching. Just so you know, these aren't always the case. This isn't always the case. We don't always have technical difficulties. Sometimes we do, though. But not always. <laughs> Thanks, Mandy. Appreciate it. What's the difference between a bob and a shag? Great question. Uh, but a bob is short. Um, shorter length. Um, not usually layered. You can do a layered bob, but not usually uh, layered. And a shag is very layered and uh, multiple different lengths. You can have medium to, you have short, medium, long uh, lengths as well, but lots of layers. The picture and sound is perfect. So Paula, it is on my end, but Ben is coming through my software. So, uh, so that's, the, that's the challenge. Is that a pigeon hat? Yes, it is. Doris, thank you so much. Diane, thank you for joining us. All right, he's calling me back. What's up? Is, is this way, oh, is this way better? Is this way okay, or is it the other way? So let me show you what you're gonna look like. So if you turn it horizontal now. You got it. I literally think the world builds tech now to just work better over your phone than a computer, so. <laughs> Yeah, but you know what? It's it's fine because we managed to find a way around it. We've not found it. You know, there's been no huge. Well, the rest of it are a big problem. <laughs> yeah, Matt's losing loads. Matt's losing tens of thousands of followers thanks to having Ben Brown on his show. <laughs> okay. All right, so we're good. So that's great. Okay, so I'm ready to go. Thank you, first. Thank you so much for your patience, guys. We're going to get started. So just to recap, when we're looking at positioning our, our mapping process, it's really simple with the shag haircut. We're going to start with a diagonal back section. This is because we're focusing all our attention right now on creating the shape that is going to influence the overall haircut most, the front. The first thing we're going to do is to start in the middle. I want you to take a really small section, roughly half an inch in its width, okay? Only a small amount at the moment, okay? This is the section we're gonna decide on how long or how short we're gonna go. We're gonna work with a soft amount of tension and we're going to position this roughly to the bridge of the nose, okay? I'm using a point cut distribution, which means my cutting line, whilst it is horizontal, I'm just cutting straight across, I'm utilizing a uh, point cut so it's slightly softer. 
One of the mistakes I used to make, guys, is I'd take this whole section and try and cut it in one. We're not going to do that. We're going to work down to the recession of the hairline. We're going to bring this section straight down with no over direction. And we're going to position our fingers parallel to the eye socket. And we're going to, again, work with some point cutting. This is creating a slight curved triangular line. Okay. Now, when we get to the, this side here, this is where it gets interesting for me because we kind of just put a fringe in, but we've got this whole section here to cut and we've got to somehow keep the length. So what I do is I will pull the section over. Now your body position needs to be on the opposite side. That's really, that's pretty much key. Why? Because your body position needs to still be open. If I'm over here, I'm all closed. My elbow is locked into my body. My range of movement is limited. But if I step over here, Wow, straight away, we're there. And I'm going to start with cutting and moving, cutting and moving, okay? So let me just move my mannequin a bit more central to you guys so it doesn't look like I'm hiding. I felt like hiding when we lost connection a minute ago. But, uh... <laughs> so again, we're utilizing a mechanic over direction, okay? And I'm just utilizing a point cut distribution and I'm over-directing my section each time. Now, this is giving me a more rapid, short-to-long distribution. Okay, so this means we're blending in from our fringe section, giving us a guideline to commit to that really disheveled shag haircut. Now, where do I need to stand now? Because remember what I just said, I have to stand on the opposite side, so you've got to move. Got to move, got to move. So now what we're going to do is, remember, we said we're going to take the section to the recession of the hairline. We don't want the shorter part to travel any further because then we're too committed to getting this cut off too short. So when I'm doing a shag on the salon floor, which in England sounds totally different to how it does in the United States, anyone from England is watching that, I always find it really funny when someone, someone commented on a video I did and they said, I really want a good shag. And in the United Kingdom, that's, uh, that's quite an amusing statement. But in, obviously, in everywhere else in the world, it means a haircut like this. Mm -hmm. So as our initial section is curved, okay, then we're going to take our section over. Pulling it over, over-directing it is helping me to constantly move the hair and, if you like, elaborate my short to long cut line. But once you've stood on one side, when you get to the other, you're almost in the wrong position because your scissors can't do what you want it to do because of the way you are. So we go around the opposite side. I come over the shoulder of my client. I secure my section. And I'm going to go slightly behind my fingers. This is a little bit like slicing. I just feel like when you slice, you get quite a solid line. So if I just went through and so have I got you guys? Don't tell me it's froze again. Well, it looks okay on your side, guys. So I'm just going to continue. Maybe it's just froze on my side. But essentially what I'm going to do, if I was to pull this down, and if I was just to slice this, it would be quite solid on the length, but by pulling it down in this way and using my chipping technique, the line is gonna fall ultimately a lot more softer. Okay. I'm hoping we're good. still okay here because my screen's frozen. It's not frozen I don't over think here. you caught me saying this before, but anything below, like a two C. Nope. <laughs> Oh, good times. So one thing I want to talk about um, until we get Ben back. We actually, he's coming back now. Um, we did, <laughs> we're going through this together, pal. Um, the one thing he's doing, which I think is super cool, is he slides that technique through. So you can see him chipping away at it and pulling uh, away as he goes. We talked about that in the virtual cutting club this morning as we cut our shag. So it's just a, a, a way, a technique of just, you know, kind of 
allowing link to happen. All right, let me get you back up here. There you go. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> thank you so much for humoring me there, Matt. So yeah. again, that technique is all about instead of using a razor or a blade, it's about using your scissors. The benefit of the chipping technique is that opposed to slicing, I was saying before, when we slice, we get a really solid curve line, which is the whole point of it. But the chipping technique is really breaking up the line. So it's offering us a little more texture straight away. Take section two, and I'll bring this straight now. So yeah, you know what? I, I do quite a lot of live Zoom classes and things from home, and I very rarely have a problem because I have like the fastest internet apparently you can have. Well, I'm not sure about that, but maybe it's because of the time of day. In the United Kingdom, we just found out when we can go back to work and things today. So we've just heard from the Prime Minister when the salons will reopen or when when he's targeting them to reopen. So maybe like everyone now is online going crazy. I don't know. So again, what I was saying before, I think every time I say this, it goes off, but when the curl, when it's below a 2C curl pattern, I tend to ensure that I keep a heavy level of moisture in the hair to control it. If I'm cutting one part of the hair when it's dry and the other part when it's wet, they're gonna be slightly different. So now we turn our attention to the middle again. So as we take our middle section, we now have section two and section one. If we cut it again on the same elevation, which was a finger's depth elevation, we're going to be keeping 100% of the hair in this section in one area. We don't want that. We want it to be softer and looser. So we're going to be elevating the section, ninth degree off its own base, grooming the hair above to this section. And I'm going to be point cutting this off. Okay. So as I point cut that away, if I was to brought that straight down, there would have been more length. So by lifting it up slightly, it means that as this falls, it's falling with a more shattered effect. Okay. So now when I take my section to the eyes here, remember? Keep all my sections nice and clean. It's a big part of any, any education I think myself and Matt always do is the mapping process and the sectioning is really, really key. So remember, look at the elevation here, guys. What's that going to give me? The elevation is moving the hair up and down. It's controlling the rate in which we remove or build length and weight traveling vertically. So by lifting it in this way, we're basically creating a more softer outline. So you see, I'm pulling this now flat to the wall behind me. My finger angle is changing with almost every single time I do it. And this is starting to give us a really nice shattered effect. So again, I've got to change body position. I've got to change sides now. This is, this is the haircut that you get your steps in. So if you're trying to get the weight off of bit the, the um, lockdown weight off this is the haircut because you seem to walk around loads more elevate is controlling what it's controlling our vertical shape that's controlling the shape going from top to bottom as i come around now i'm going to once again go behind the client i'm going to go behind them elevating the section like so pulling over Look at that. Straight through. Giving us really nice, soft shape. Try and sit that fast. <laughs> so let's just take a little review. And if you have any questions, shout them out. So you can start to see the effects of having a bit more length here. We can control how it falls in the face, I suppose. One thing I love about the shag is how you automatically start getting a lot of nice texture and movement out of the hair, especially on a quality mannequin like the pivot point ones, which is giving us this curl that almost is inspiring us to style it in a certain way. I'm going to style it reasonably smooth and straight today because I want you guys to see the end result because if you're going to trust what I'm doing, especially if you haven't seen it done like this before, you really need to see how it looks more straighter before you start committing to do it on a client. So I'm going to take section three. 
You see how we're going further up the head here, guys? Really simple mapping process at the moment. Literally, um, a while ago, Matt and I were doing it. Oh, no, it's froze again. Oh, don't do this to me. He's froze. He's not froze. But he thinks he's froze. <laughs> and there he goes. This isn't too bad, though. You know, it could be worse. He is get. He's clear until he's not, right? So we do have that going for us. Um, he'll call back in. So let me look at what's going on in the comments. You're good. We could see you. Yeah. You could see him until you couldn't. <laughs> um, let's see. This man has natural instincts and a gift. This is how you call hair. Great job. Love your videos. That's great. Elena, you are correct. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it. I'll use this moment since Brian's on here. Is this Brian or Danielle right here? I can't tell. It's too small. That's Danielle. That's not Brian. Here he is. We got Brian's classes coming up Wednesday at 10 a.m. My class is tomorrow. So if you guys are looking for more education, that'll be in studio. So the signal will be great and clear and nice. Um, we'll work this out. I got to get Ben some different, uh, different stuff here. All right, he's, he's back. Let's see. Hello. Hey, guys. So sorry. I don't you know what's know cool, Ben? Is that when, you, when your thing messes up, I just use it as a commercial break and I just tease other things. So <laughs> it's fine. Oh, you're very good. <laughs> Well, listen, thank you, everybody, for your patience. Honest to goodness, I do lives a lot, and I'm not sure what's happening. Um, I accept full blame. I will be um, sitting in a dark room by myself after this, so there we go. <laughs> um, so what I was basically saying was, guys, that each time we take a section, the elevation is a tiny bit higher. Our vertical shape is essentially following the head shape. Now, when we say vertical, we mean the shape that travels from top to bottom. So when I, when I take essentially what is section three, if I start to try to take all the hair at once, I suddenly have got too many guides. So I'm going to take my, my column, which is what I work with first. I'm going to go ahead and remove section one. Okay. So now I've got section two and section three, and this is going to give me a much clearer idea on where my guide's gonna go. Thank you. So as I elevate the section now, I go straight off base here, you see? So what you'll see here, guys, is that section three is having to travel further. So although we are essentially almost working round, it's still getting a little bit longer as we go towards the top of the head. So that's section three. Now, if we were going to do a little bit of cross-checking here, which is always a good idea, you can see that we're almost, our cut line is almost curved, okay? So we're almost like following the head, slightly expanding each time. So let's go ahead and take our next column. As we pull the section up, we remove section one, okay? Just so we're only working with two sections at once. As I lift up, my fingers are not quite horizontal. I'm slightly elevating here. because so we're expanding away from the front now. The head shape is different. Remember here, the head shape is coming in. So we have to be really different with our angles to suit the face shape. Now we're running on the apex zone. We're running straight down to the temple bone, which is the widest part of the head. We have to be very conscientious of the effects we're doing now are going to have on the length as it falls down. So it's important that your cut, your cut line or distribution is lifted. So let me just drop her down a little. So you'll see my fingers are kind of pointing at 10 o'clock. So not 9, 10 o'clock. And that's giving me this distribution of short into long so this is essentially helping me to maintain the integrity the thickness and the length 
but we're still getting Daniel Shank effect. So it's very important. I think sometimes people think like the length has to be the same everywhere. It doesn't, then it would be like a mullet shape, which is very different to doing a shag haircut. <laughs> Do you know, like sometimes when I finish a class with Matt or something, Matt will always ring me and we'll have a little chat. He won't ring me today. He'd be like, there's no way I'm ringing him today now. The first, I was actually about to tell you a story about the, one of the first times I did a class with Matt for free sign education. And um, if you remember, Matt, I got the time difference wrong. Yes. And you like said, so how are you? And I went, yeah, I'm fine. I'm literally just sitting here chilling. And the class was about to start in like three minutes time. Yep. And we had a similar problem to what we had today, didn't we, Matt, where we had to improvise. Yeah, we did. It was, uh, I think we're better on the fly. I'm going to be honest. We, you know. we do tend to get done. See, you see, guys, we're going short into long, okay? Short into long. Pulling section four onto the base of section three, but we're over-directing the cut line. Remember, we haven't even put in a guideline for that yet because our guideline started here, but now our section is working back here. So you have to be conscientious about that, especially the effects it has as we move through the zones. But if we just sort of take a breather and have a little look at, I don't mean literally, I mean, oh no, it's froze. Don't. Oh. Can you hear me? I love his deep breath. <laughs> He's so stressed and I don't, I don't want him to be stressed because things happen. Um, but I'm like, I feel so bad for you, mister. <laughs> oh, no, it's my fault. I don't know what it is, but... Um, it's not your I'll fault. Really I'll no. somehow blame my wife for it. Which is, uh... <laughs> so if, we can, if I just move, move her a little bit closer to here and just start to show you uh, the shape, essentially what we have is almost this face framing effect. But what is different to this face frame then let's say if we brought everything forward is, it's almost got a layer and a line in one. So we've decided we've put the shape in here, but we've also started to create a layer as well. So what are the rules so far, guys? Does this thing is a fly curse words. <laughs> Brian, can you imagine that? <laughs> if uh, I started to really drop some big bombs. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kristen. Do you know what it is? I am, I, um, I'm a big consumer of education and I, I love education. I, Matt's uh, channel has helped me a lot on my own journey of learning. And so whenever I'm asked to do something based on education, I consider it a huge compliment. So I always want to work very hard when I get the opportunity to, because like most of us in education, we all sort of dreamt of doing this. So when you get the chance, you just want to deliver something that someone's going to go, oh yeah, I get it now. You know, but then to be fair, we're still doing that, so it's good fun. Um, so I'm taking section five, but what what's different now about section five? Have you noticed? It's almost pivoting from a point behind the ear. What what's that? Why why am I doing that? Well, my sections were like this initially, then like this, then like this, and now like that, and then like that. This is all to do with not losing the integrity of your length on the outline. Because I teach there are three main zones, working from the corner of the hairline or the mastoid process to the crown, working into the apex, into the front. There's a huge difference in the amount of hair here to there. That's the basic reason. So when I come to cut these sections, I take that into consideration with my sectioning, my cutting section. So I work to pivot these areas to help prevent getting a hole behind the ear. I think if you check it twice, you cut it once, you know? So we've got our section through here. What I liked was when you got back on, you saw me having a quick drink of my Pepsi Max. Getting, getting that down me. Okay, guys, I'm ready. I'm ready. So... I've got my section. What do I need to do first? As I'm working with the middle column, and I know I'm gonna use my guideline from the previous, 
what do I need to do? I need to remove. So right now I've got five sections here. So I need to go through and remove some of the previous, which is what I'm doing. So as I then pull my guideline up off its own base, I then comb and groom the cutting section. Just gonna lift up a tiny bit. Sorry about my face getting close to the screen there, guys. Oh my God, what's that? <laughs> I make a joke that when I was younger and I was hotter, shall we say, they used to call me Boy Band Ben because I looked like I was out of a boy band with my little Nick Carter curtains. And, but my friends call me Gastric Band Ben nowadays, which is really cruel. But, but to be fair, still really quite funny. <laughs> so we'll get into the groove bit now, guys. I'm taking my section, I'm lifting it. Remember, by removing the previous, I'm maintaining a control in where my guideline is. So as I spin this around, I really want to explain a bit more about that short to long. So as I pull this through, my fingers now pointing up. Remember, I said like, let's say this is three o'clock, two o'clock, whatever, or nine o'clock, whatever. Whichever angle you're watching me from, essentially it's lifting up off the horizontal. This is so that as this falls, it's constantly spreading the weight onto the next section. Like, like dominoes, it's not building in one area. A weight line occurs when more than one section is cut to the same area. So by elevating the section, we're distributing that weight to travel towards the base, the length of your client. So as I lift this section again, pivot off the... Uh, behind the ear. Anyone who gets that joke, congratulations. Can you explain that joke to me? So it's not Friends. I mean, you know like um, Ross from Friends? Yeah, but I, I didn't watch Friends there's, enough. Right, well there's this, there's this point where Ross is, is getting a few of his friends to help a few of his friends. Chandler and somebody else, I forget who, to help him lift the sofa upstairs. And it can't get up, so he keeps shouting, pivot, pivot <laughs> to them. Yeah, anyway, if you've seen it, it is quite funny. If you haven't seen it, you'll just assume that the Pepsi Max has got to me. But um... <laughs> so, yeah, Wait, I'm so working in columns. Real quick, one thing I want to bring up with you, um, because yeah. I always love looking at the not only the vertical aspect, which I think, or the I I would guess I would say this is the horizontal. Like when you were talking about that short to long, right? Yeah, that's horizontal. Yeah, yeah. that's horizontal. But if you look at the pinch on the vertical. And how that's basically a condensed section. You could yeah. see the over direction that's happening on the horizontal too. So uh, understanding exactly. that, understanding haircutting in, in a way of not only understanding what you're creating vertically, but also what you're creating horizontally as well. So I think that that's, yeah. you know, cool that you're doing it this all way. About, it's all about where we choose to move the hair from the root. Yeah. So if we choose to move the hair side to side that's over direction. So when I'm pulling the hair to me, if you like side to side, that's over direction. When I'm pulling it up and down, that's elevation. Then depending on your cutting section, you can work on diagonals and things and still utilize those mechanics to control your section. So I'm, I'm using elevation, which is moving it up and down to pull that section onto the previous, which is a bit like over direction because we're on the top of the head. So as, it, as it meets this section, I'm cutting it, and then it's going to be slightly longer. So each time we've gone, it's getting slightly, slightly longer, which is giving us a softer guideline to implement this into the haircut. But as we work around the curve of the head, because when we first started this, it was almost all on the frown part of the head, or the hairline. So it was almost all coming below the round of the head, or the apex. Well, now we're right on the apex, which means if we start to try to do that here, we're gonna, it's gonna look shorter here than it is at the front. So it's been important to slowly get the guideline longer to enable me to work this into the back layer without giving a mullet to our client or guests. So I've used the movement of the hair up and down to control that. I've used over direction to control the, the, the if you like, how much length is expanding to the sides, but I've used my cut line to preserve the length at the bottom. So I said there's five main mechanics to cutting hair. Elevation, over direction, which we've already discussed, and cut line. But then you also have to look at tension. 
Tension is the stress we're placing on the hair and skin, remember, because if your section is so tight, like if Matt's teaching you and you're like really pulling the hair, putting your knee on the hair and then cutting it, that much tension won't give you precision. It's kind of like equal tension gives you precision. And knowing when to vary your tension to control how your hair reacts to difficult hair growth patterns, difficult hair lines, difficult hair textures. So as I'm working, before I tell you the last mechanic, I will tell you, I'm now taking a radial section working just in front of what I've just cut. This is gonna work as a guideline now for my back layer. So now I totally abandoned what I was just doing because I've worked to a point where I need to do more to the hair now. Because if I keep on bringing this forward, where there's the most amount of hair on the hair, oh no, what are we doing? Okay, no big deal. We'll be back. Here he comes. I'm more reactive with it now, though. So, what, sorry, guys. Let me just recap on what I just said. I'm now taking your guideline, which is basically a centimeter thick section running from the back part of what we've just been cutting. Okay. So, all the hair that is isolated is still isolated at the back. Okay. But now I'm making a decision to change my approach to this haircut due to the fact that the back zone has a lot more hair than the front zone. If we didn't take a different approach at this point and we just kept on over directing our sections, it would become more and more subtle as we got towards the back. And what's the point in that? We've established that the back is an area that has the most amount of hair and we're going to take the most subtle approach to that doesn't seem to make any sense. So we don't. <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is to give this a really, really good layer to synchronize, if you like, or to balance visually everything we're doing. So the section we just took was essentially, <laughs> essentially, is the section we're gonna use the guideline. So I'm gonna work central vertical, okay? Why? Why would I start in the middle? Well, that is the area of the highest density within that section. Density, density, in my opinion, means the amount of hair in one area. So there's a lot more hair in the middle of this section than there is behind the ear. Behind the ear, the hairline has changed. So I start vertical so I can change the effects we're going to have on the weaker areas utilizing other direction. I'm going to come to the last mechanic, don't worry, in a moment. We did a great class, uh, Matt and I did, for his team the other day. And uh, we went through all of our cutting theory of education. It was a long class, but a good class. Hopefully, he's had no one drop out since. <laughs> yeah, if you guys uh, get a chance, it should be up soon, but um, it was definitely a great theory theory class. Um, the virtual cutting club people that are on the, in the room right now. So as I take my section, okay, we have some choices to make. Firstly, we have a choice of elevation. I could lift my elevation to work parallel to the ceiling, pulling straight off the top, which is going to mean I'm going to be more impactful at the top than I am at the bottom. I can do it where I pull it straight to the walls, okay? And again, that's going to build a corner. I've got all these options. My preference is actually going to be to follow the head shape. So as I do this, I get my section and I lift straight up. Now my first section here, I've got my guideline coming from the back. Now I'm gonna cut my first section just following the head shape. Do you see that? I'm then gonna take away half that section, keep this section nice and isolated, and bring up some more hair. And sure enough, we're following the head shape again. Now, so the first two sections, whilst, just before we hit the occipital bone, our shape is following the head shape, utilizing the guideline from the front section, okay? So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now take this section from here, and I'm gonna lift this section to meet it. So you see what's happening here now? Now the cut line is being changed from round into triangle. Do 
you see that? So now my cut line has gone into short to long. So we'll be like this at the minute. Our expanded shape is working up to here, 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 nice and right, and then it goes off and keeps the length. So that is my section one. Section two, we're going to work round horizontally, which I'm going to come to that in a moment. So the final mechanic is body position. So where are your feet? Where are your feet? Where are you stood? How, you know, I refer to it as open body or closed. So I gave you a little synopsis on that earlier when I was cutting the front. Let's look at it as this. So when I take this section from here, first I've got a little bit too much hair, so I'm just gonna get rid, let some drop down. Before I cut this, I'm just going to tell you now, because I want this to be round horizontal, my over direction is going to be meeting section one and section two in the middle. I'm not going to be over directing two onto one, because I'll be increasing length traveling side to side. If I over direct one onto two, I'm going to be decreasing the length of two. Are we froze? Are we froze? Froze we are. He will be back. Let's do it this way. He will be back in just a moment. Here he is. Um, I think my mouth is using up all the power. So I'm over directing section one and two into the middle of one another. But if you look at my body position, I'm square to my section, which means when I'm square straight onto the section, I can assess the effects of elevation. When I'm square to the head, if I'm cutting like this and I'm square to the head, I assess the over direction more. So it depends which shape, which mechanic I need the most control of. When you refer to your body as closed or open, let's say right now this section is kind of in the middle of me. But let's say I let it go closer to this, my, my hand here holding the section. This hand now is fairly limited and it's fairly close to my body. Let's say I go over here and do the same. Immediately, this hand now is, has got to come quite close to me to cut the hair. That's a closed body. Open body is when I've got my, my arms away from my body, not locked in, and I'm able to control my shape without being distorted. So remember, what do I do to get my shape round horizontal? So I, if you remember, I over direct so that the sections meet in the middle of each other's bases. So if I'm cutting section one and two, let's call it 1.5. I want two and one to go ahead and meet in the middle. I want three and two to meet in the middle. Yeah, that's what I want. Now, I'm only going to adopt that until we hit the mastodoid process. When we go past the mastoid process, which is also basically the corner of your hairline. So this is the final section where I'm working with the over direction pattern I've just described. Once we change, once we get into this area, there's suddenly a lot less hair. So if I just get this section out of the way, you'll see underneath here, that there's a lot less hair here than there is on this section. So if I carried on with a round horizontal shape, what do you think will happen here? It'll be inconsistent to the shape behind it due to the fact that there's less hair here. So the round shape's gonna have a greater effect. So I'm very conscientious of keeping the outline of my haircuts looking equal, looking balanced, and not looking thinner in one area than the other. Whenever I ask a client, who, let's say a client's got long hair. Oh, don't, is it froze again? No, it's not froze, we're okay. We're okay, <laughs> oh my God, I thought it froze. Hello, are you, I'm still there? You're oh, still sorry, there. Sorry. sorry. Um, yeah, so whenever I get a guest in the chair, and he or she has got long hair, and they want to have along the style. I always think they're never really bored of it being long and they don't want it to feel thin. You know, they might say, my hair is really, really thick, but they probably don't want their hair to feel thin. They might want me to remove some density, make the hair more manageable, 
make it maybe even take less time to blow dry. But they don't want me to get like to go really crazy and take too much hair away because all a haircut really is is how and where we leave the shape. Okay, so how and where we leave the shape, uh, how and where we leave the weight. Excuse me. So if I suddenly remove all the weight, then I've kind of removed the big part of what makes the shape. Okay, so I can really conscience to that fact now. We've got our section here, okay? We're just gonna take away the previous section, move it out of the way. This section here is now gonna be our guideline. So as we come to on the area here, which as we discussed, the density levels are lower, I'm gonna be working back to previous. So I hope that kind of makes sense to you all. Like I'm now doing something with my mechanics to control the rate in which the length and weight in, basically improve or improve the length and weight if you like get longer and heavier as we travel side to side so as it increases it's me moving it back that is going to do that but if i didn't do that we'd have an issue a big issue with a hole behind the ear so i'm over directing this now onto the previous section remember why am i doing that is to increase the length, I couldn't think of the word increase earlier, increase the length traveling side to side. So as we ever direct this, yeah, it's quite exciting in England at the moment, anyone who's from the UK, are we okay, are we okay? You're good. Nope, you're not. <laughs> you're good until you're not. Yep. Um, he'll be back. He's coming back. What's going on in the UK? Let me know in the chat. Did you guys get, uh, is quarantine over? Not sure. All right, he's back. Oh my God. It seems to give me like five minutes before it just boots me out. Um, so as I come to my last section, essentially we've discussed the outline. So I'm just gonna get on with it. We're still over directing now back to the previous. You see there's nothing coming off here and there shouldn't be that much coming off because this was one of the final sections. Yeah, look, brilliant. There's nothing coming off and that's exactly what we want because we, we should have already cut this in our top section. So, there's one zone left to do. So as we pull all this round now, I'm just gonna move this back out of the way so I can get back to section one. Now, I'm going to do this in the same body position I have. I always advise that if you're cutting short into long, I always advise that you maintain that so you don't suddenly switch sides and work across this way. One side, you'll be pulling your head, the hair to go on to previous, and the next side, you'll be pushing. This is so that we maintain our starting point. If, if you try to cut long into short, it's a lot less accurate than it is trying to cut short into long. When we refer to long into short or anything like that, we basically refer to the cut line the shape we're choosing to cut and there's really three choices three basic choices there's working round which means we, we're deciding our shape is going to follow the head shape it's not going to increase in length or weight or we can use square which means it's going to slowly increase in length and weight due to the fact that it increases in length as the head rounds away we can work triangular which means we direct length and weight into certain areas. So we have a choice of three cut lines. I've worked with round into triangle vertically, and I've worked round into square horizontally. I've done this to compensate for areas that have got a low density, and I've done it to ensure that we control, if you like, the outline of the haircut. Even though we haven't cut the outline in yet, we don't want to be over thinning out any areas. So we come towards one of our final sections. Right now, our over direction is going back onto previous. So my vertical shape is round up to this point, following the head shape. Then as we lift the hair up to meet that cut line, we then flatten the cut line, which transforms the round shape, which was following the head shape, into a short and long. Any questions coming through, Matt? So, so far, um, 
I haven't seen a lot of questions. If you guys do have questions, just a lot of people chatting, chatting together, which is really nice Good. to see. Um, there yeah. was one about a side parting Ed Combs asked. Um, well, Ed, that's a really good question because it actually does throw a bit of a spanner in the works because Coons you have to cut part. the first few sections, maybe sections one to three on the side parting, and then you almost have to start again by taking a new guideline and starting it more central as you work back. Because, of course, if you're working it off the back here to, to this part on a side parting, you're going to have an issue because you're going to be an off balance with your crown. So it'd be like your crown will be longer on one side than the other, which is fine because that's what we want on the apex. But as we get past the apex, we need, to, we need to change that. So what I'm trying to do is I cut the first maybe three sections, how I showed you, uh, but, but on the side parting. And then from there, I, go, I jump straight into changing going more central. Nice. And uh, Vinny is asking, uh, why do you keep changing your scissor technique? So you kind of shift oh, your hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so you have, um, you've got the Eastern grip, Vinny, which is, uh, you've got standard grip, okay, which is, everyone knows, okay, but the Eastern grip is where I reverse my grip and I cut. So I just change the grip when I feel tension or pressure on the tendon in my thumb or on my wrist. So like the, let's say I'm doing this bit now here. Cutting like that feels quite awkward. Okay, look, I've got to put a lot of strain on my wrist. My thumb is almost traveling in a strange way. So when I change it to this, there's no strain. So I flip between the two different scissor grips to offer me more comfort when I'm cutting the hair. So what, he's also, he's, he's yelling at us. So um, explain, so club cutting and intermixing with point cutting. Why do you do oh, those two things? Sorry, Vinny. So the club cutting and intermixing is where I, if, when I get closer to the outline, oh, it's froze looking pretty unfortunate there. <laughs> Am I there? Yes, but you don't know this. There he goes. Um, this is what happens when we yell, Vinny, just so you know. Shuts everything down. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Here he is. Sorry about that, Vinny. So to answer, yeah, Vinny called me out really, and I had to bail. Um, <laughs> so I mix between the two. To be honest with you, when I feel I don't need to implement much texture, like at the very start, I needed the texture because I don't want to have to thin the hair a lot when the hair is dry. But in here, I just need to get it balanced. I don't really need to point cut this excessively. But the front, that's really where I house all the texture to this shape. So of course. When I got when I got the front when I was cutting the front I was point cutting, and then when I get to the back you'll notice I flipped into just cutting it straight, and that's again just because the shape here doesn't really need me to try to thin out the outline. I prefer it quite strong. So let's have a little look at her. So I'm going to blow dry now. Uh, I I'm going to prefer to dry this a little bit more smoother because there's a bit more pressure on me then. I think it's got to look right, you know. And if you're going to trust what I'm showing you, you really need to see it more straighter. So I'm going to work with a wrap drying technique. And from the wrap dry, I'm going to then be working with a round strap brush to get the hair really, really smooth. I'm working with a Dyson hair dry today. Um, if, it was, if it was quite short hair, I probably wouldn't be using a nozzle because it would dry too quickly. But because there is quite a bit of hair, I'm going to use the nozzle. So I'm going to use it on a medium speed and a fast heat. So wrap drying is me wrapping the hair around the cute, around the contours of the head shape to get an equal bend on the room and to stretch out any bend on the mid legs. So I go from let's say in this case this side to that side, and I'll do the opposite. Yes, everyone in the United Kingdom has just found out they can go back to work two weeks into April. So that's, we've been in lockdown now for a long time here. So it's pretty exciting news. But I've been asked to, um, I've been asked to work overseas quite a lot in March in uh, the Middle East. Uh, I'm going out to Dubai and Qatar. 
And um, obviously, like, uh, they wanted to go and march, and I was saying, but I don't think I can. So I put on Facebook, like, oh, anyone know? You know, I immediately get loads of abuse from people saying, you can't, who do you think you are? I'm like, nobody. I just ask the question. I think there's a lot of frustration, which is understandable, but I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in no rush to travel. Um, you know, I'm not like going to rush it. I go to Mexico in June for a big show out there. I'm doing um, about six days out there in Mexico. It'll be my second time going to there. Um, I'm never in a rush to travel. I don't, I don't want to force opportunities. You know, if they're there, they're there. So you see, I'm focusing not on the ends right now, I'm focusing on the roots. Still getting some volume, okay? We're not, I don't want to have too flat. If I then just like skip a few steps, uh, you know, like ignore the other side for a moment, I'm then going to use a round brush, okay? I really like the round brush to give me a little bit of bend uh, on the ends of the hair, not the mid lengths, so I want to get control of that. Otherwise, there would be no point in wrap drying. Anybody else think it's like amazing that the iPhone's cutting out his blow dryer noise? That's right, we don't allow negativity in these rooms, that's for sure. Booted, right out. I guess he froze. He'll be back. He'll be back. Oh, all right. So just to give you guys a little update because he's going to be blow drying. Uh, he's working through the blow dry right now. Um, so we have classes coming up all week. Tomorrow I'll be live cutting hair um, at, doo -doo -doo, and I forget what I'm doing tomorrow, but uh, I'll be doing a haircut live right here um, at, 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And then we have Brian Hare Wednesday, 10 a.m. And then Danielle Downs is gonna be doing a rainbow, um, a color melt on Thursday at 12.30. And then we have Ergo doing some styling at three o'clock on Friday. So tons of education coming up this week. There he is, looking good. So let's get there guys. Again, thank you to Matt and to Pivot Point for supplying me with the mannequin. It's just beautiful to work with. He can just thank me. They charged me for it. Just kidding. What I describe it as, you know, like if, if you work with, um, like before I've had to work with mannequin heads and they've not been great. I mean, that's just fine. You know, they're like, I they cost considerably less than a pivot point, so I get it. But it's a little bit like using a computer that's really, really slow, and then using a pivot point, and that's like using a really fast computer. It's kind of like 
such a difference in the way the hair is set on the mannequin. It's such a difference in how it dries. Like it's drying so easily for me, whereas sometimes I've got to manipulate the hair with a lot of heat products. It does make a difference. But like one of the things I always say to people is that when I buy, I mean, I buy a lot of mannequin heads and I tend to try to do at least three haircuts out of them. So that me and Matt will use this haircut at least one more time. I mean, obviously the fringe is relatively short, so it'll obviously be a shorter style or something with, with a fringe. But I always try to use them. I would never grab a mannequin like this and just cut it off from long to short because obviously there's a lot of other opportunities in there. Yeah. I always cut a bang in those, and then you got to figure out what haircut to do. He can't hear me. I could say anything I wanted about him right now. Sorry, Matt? Yep. Yep. <laughs> you know, he looks the hairdryer. I said I could say anything I want about him right now, and he wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, Gary. Super cool. Love seeing that. Kristen, all the classes this week, you know, they'll be up for a replay and I'll re-edit them and everything. So uh, there's condensed versions. Even Brian's class, uh, I just reposted. I got Danielle's done. That'll be coming out today. Condensed versions. So like, you know, it was an hour class and then it gets cut down to 10 minutes so you guys can consume it uh, quicker. Peggy, that's super nice. Brian, literal. I don't know. I probably said something wrong. Lovely shape. That's the truth. I know the lives are way fun, I think. Austria. Will he go and cross check in the dry hair? Are you going to cross check, Ben? Sorry? Are you going to cross check it, you think? Or yeah, yeah. Like I said at the very start, we cross check this vertical because we pulled the sections this way. Whereas the back, we're going to check it horizontal. So we initially, after, the, after the first three sections, we just cross checked it just to check. And to make sure we were, were, you know, were elevating to the correct level. Because that's one of my one of the advice is that if you're not sure of the correct elevation, your cross check will tell you. So if you've done two sections and you elevate and you think, ah, that that's coming over more at the front for my shag haircut, you know that your elevation is probably too low. So cross checking is a great way of assessing that. So I I will cross check everything over. Uh, that's one reason why I like to try it smoother too. Uh, so... so I'm not going to need to do a lot of thinning here, um, but I do need to put my length in. So, uh... He froze again there we go so uh, Angela here's a good little uh, I just want to address this because I, I don't know if it's you but a couple of people have asked about the virtual classes um, I did make an announcement today I'm not gonna make that announcement yet but uh, but you're probably noticing that you can't sign up for the virtual cutting club as of right now virtual cutting club is closed but it will be um, opening up in a different form in the next couple weeks, a uh, few weeks probably, um, when we launch the new version of the app. So uh, download the FSE Now app and you'll start to see different things and, and um, you know, you'll be able to access that stuff coming up pretty soon. So, um, so just be on the lookout. Virtual Cutting Club will be part of the FSE Now app. If you don't know where to find that, just FSE Now, type that into the app store and you'll be able to find our app. All of these classes are on there. Uh, and upcoming events will be on there, everything. So just, just go download that and you'll be good to go. 
Okay. All right. Wow. Wow. Here we go. So I'm just going to use um, a little, uh, just a medium pair of straighteners just to smooth over the very bottom of the hair, not the fringe, uh, just because I'm going to cut the length. Because I haven't cut the length yet, so we do need to place the length in. Why wouldn't I cut the length in at the start? Surely that makes more sense, doesn't it? Well, for me, especially when I'm taking a lot of hair off with a shag haircut, I want to put the length in at what is aesthetically correct when I finish it. Meaning that I could cut the length when the hair was wet and it'd be too short or be too long. Like I could cut it and then layer it. Uh oh. You going? We're almost there, guys. We're so close. So close. I don't know. I'm glad you guys are enjoying the class. I love seeing all the comments. I know we're, we're piecing through this and I'm gonna chop it up and it's not even gonna seem like this ever happened. So <laughs> I am excited for that. There will be another version of it. Um, but Ben's doing great. Let's hang in there, have some fun. Here we go, Ben. Take it away, okay. pal. <laughs> okay. Sorry guys. So what I was saying before was that when I um, decide to put the length in afterwards, it's when the, the most important thing I'm, I'm trying to achieve is the shag shape. So for this demonstration, I was working it in as that. So again, I'm leaving the fringe alone, just working through the shape. But obviously the length now is quite wispy because we've taken a heck of a lot of hair away from it. So we've got to do something with that. But I could have put the length in when the hair was wet and, and it could be, could still need some more hair coming off, you know? So, my advice is I, especially if the client still wants long hair, I wouldn't take a lot off. If they do want like an A-line shape, like more like a bob with, with kind of like a, you know, a little bit of a shag feel to it, then obviously that's different because the bob is the most important thing. The shag is just part of that. But with this haircut, like one, one Matt and I were talking about doing it, it was, it was literally purely a, a shag haircut I was going to do. And I've done a few of these just recently for my, my site, and um, they're really good fun to do. I think they're really fast on the salon floor. That's one thing I notice when I do them on a client is they're quite fast. Um, scissor over a razor. I would say that this is one of the few haircuts where I think a razor is probably better uh, because the angle you're cutting at, the short to long, you get so much more control with a razor in my opinion which as a cutting purist um, obviously that's quite strange to say but it does work so we're almost there guys so it's starting to look really cool okay we've got to do some work with the texture looking great but look at that look at that needs coming off so we're going to start putting the hair straight down taking a guideline from each side. Again, like Vinny was saying, I was switching between my distribution and that was kind of where, where I needed it. So if I felt like, you know, I'm going to be layering the back through a lot, I don't really want to thin it out too much. So I check my balance, make sure it's okay. And then I need to simply connect in the dots. What could you have done with this haircut so that you could have kept all the length. Well, it's probably down to how short we went with the layer. That was probably one thing. The other thing would be, I would say, the layer we put in, we could have worked triangle straight away. Do you know what I mean? Like we could have gone off straight away and gone more triangular. But it's supposed to be like, because I'm doing something for Matt and you know, I know I love Matt's work and I wanted it to be less subtle because obviously I want to, I want to impress you all, he says. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really simple what I'm doing I'm just point cutting my length my external shape in really really simple we're a one little things, bit longer on this side then one of the things that I like to say um, with doing the length later too is that being so a lot of people can look weak at the bottom and yeah. until you cut that internal shape the internal layers and do all of that stuff you can't really determine what that those ends are going to look like. So being able to really stamp that line in later, I that's why I really enjoy that. 
yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, I I do it on Bob sometimes when I feel like, oh my goodness me, this Bob I'm doing, you know, it needs so much, um, like it's so heavy, so weighty. I probably sometimes start. So there's my cross check. There you go. Um, nice and neat. I mean, my hands are almost shaking there because you're thinking if anything else is going to go on today, there's going to be a second <laughs> I've missed in the middle of that. Then, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm just going to parallel point cut the top section. Okay, so I'm just going to bring this hair cut over. And obviously, we've got our nice, neat cross check, and we don't want that. We want to just, just shatter that slightly. The more shallow I point cut, the less impactful it's going to be. The deeper I point cut, if you like, the more impactful it's going to be. But impactful on what exactly? It's impactful on the amount of density within the hair. Now, when I say density, I don't mean weight. Density, I refer to as the amount of hair we leave in one place. So if we leave all the hair, like a one length bob in one place, like here, there's a lot of density in one area, which is why there's a lot of weight on the, on the outline. So we're going to approach that in a moment. But when I just do a little bit of point cutting like I want to do, it's just not too impactful. It's just a gentle introduction to what I want to do. Okay. He's just taking a break, guys. Just taking a quick break. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. I see that? Yeah, we're back. So like I say, it's just a gentle, gentle introduction. <laughs> yeah, I literally just sort of had a quick drink of my Pepsi again. Um, but what we've got so far, if I just lift her up to show you. Is we've got a really nice, soft shape. Now, I've just dried this down really smooth. Okay, but again, I can certainly get this and make it all textured. But what we're gonna do now is to focus on the fringe, okay? So the first thing I would do is to see, I wanna distribute my fringe slightly out of the eyes, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is a little bit of channel cutting. I'm gonna start from fairly deep, and I'm not gonna let it drop too low. Why? The lower it goes, the more it will impact. And right now, I just want to have, remove a little bit of bulk, a little bit of the density out of the section, and review it. So as I do that, I'm just taking away a really small amount of the head sitting on the ends. Once I do that, then I'm going to start with my parallel point cutting, but I'm going to cut the same section a couple of times and then move on. I'm not going to cut the whole thing. I call this double tap. And what I mean by that is it sort of helps me to create more definition in the lengths. So you see it's starting to look more like an actual shape that you'd, <laughs> that you'd want, you know, hopefully. <laughs> so let's go through that again. I've got all this weight here. The first thing I did was I did a little bit of channel cutting, but if I went all the way down, it becomes more impactful. So because I don't know how much impact I really need at the minute, I just do a small amount first to give myself a better canvas to assess the levels needed. And to be honest with you, because it's a shag haircut, there's really not too much that needs doing. But the double tap helps me to keep the ends defined. Now, the middle is still quite blunt. So I'm going to go in and do a little more texturizing in the middle. Also, turn her to face you. Do you know, a, a quick story just while I'm finishing off the texturizing. Uh, I remember one of the last times I traveled to an airport, uh, the guys who park, you know, when you, you pay, so they park your car for you. And uh, so you can, you can basically drive closer to the airport um, and park closer to the airport. And then you pay a quite a lot extra and they will go and park the car for you. You know, you just drop it off and park it. But they were really rude to me on the phone as I was on the way down. And, um, and so, what, so I had a mannequin head. So I put the mannequin in the floor well of the passenger side. So when this guy, it was late at night as well. So when this guy got in the car, to move my car, there would have been like a human head staring up at him from the other side. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, yeah, there we go. It's actually funny. So we, uh, me and my my wife, um, fiance, we've been engaged for sixteen years, so we're married. Um, so we had a, we used to live on a street that like it was like a pass through street, so people would fly down it with their cars. 
So one day she took the mannequins from our house and just put them along the side of the road. And, That's brilliant. Yeah, and then everybody just freaked out every time they would uh, drive down. You know, there's, That's so good. there's so many different things you can do with a uh, with a mannequin head when you're done with it. I mean, I I've got one of the ones from Pivot Point with the shoulders, and I use that to put my baseball caps on in my oh. wardrobe. So, you know, because it was like so expensive to buy that mannequin as well. So when I finished it, I shaved it. I used to use it to explain section. I mean, I got the idea from you, Matt. Yeah. I got um, it from Sam Villa, just so you know. Oh, he's great, isn't he? Yeah. I watched his interview with you I... and with Robert Cronin's as well. I love Robert. So, sorry, just to go back to the haircut you meant to watch yeah. it with me as well. Sorry, I'm just slicing into it because I realize I go off, off piece a lot. It's okay. I'm slicing through it to really shatter it so that it connects in better, but... I'm only worth doing that with the top section because, as you can imagine, if I did that with the bottom, the length would become even more transparent, which we don't want or need. So I was going through like this. I sort of fan the hair out, and I just start to slice deep, deep into the hair. And it's just giving me a nice, shattered feel to my shag haircut. So let's just make a little assessment of the shape so far. So what we've got is we've got our shape where there's, there's a nice layer running through the back as well, okay? We've got the outline, which is cut to roughly the shoulder area. We've got, let's get a little bit of product. So product-wise, I mean, oh no. Oh no. I love that he said, oh no, before that happened. This is... By far one of my favorite live streams ever. You're back. Okay. <laughs> I don't apply any product until I think it looks finished. Okay. So when I am doing a client or a demonstration, a model or anything like that at all, I like the haircut to look how, how it's meant to before I apply product. My thought here is that if it looks really great without product, I know I've finished. If I've got to force it with some product, maybe there's more I could explore to do to solve that, you know? So like with this, if I was having to like really, if I was really struggling to get volume out of these layers, you'd maybe think the client's really going to struggle, you know? So it's my own take on that. Love that. I think it looks nice. Looks really what's, nice. What's up, what, what do you think, Matt? I think it looks great. I'm psyched about it. Uh, are you, like said, are you psyched it's over? No, I'm not psyched it's over. I'm <laughs> bummed it's over. I thought I had a good was, time. I, was about I think to say before before Matt deletes my number and unfollows me. Uh, <laughs> no, thank you so much. I mean, obviously, if you've got any questions at all. Yeah, if you guys have questions, type them in the chat real quick before we go. Um, me and Ben could definitely talk forever. So, um, you we do often. Would, yeah, we do. So, uh, definitely post those in the chat. If you have questions about anything, I think it looks awesome. It's, it's funny. Cause I just, with the virtual cutting club this morning, we did a dry, dry cut shag. Oh, nice. Um, uh, you know, so kind of fun, longer, uh, longer curtain fringe. So, yeah. Well, you know, you know what it is? I, I think that the, the shag is relatively subjective because it's, it's trend oriented, isn't it? Yeah. Because that, that the method I've done for you today is, is actually a soon round layer. That's the methodology of it is it's um, elevating the section each time so that we follow a round shape into a triangle shape. The differences I've adopted were quite a few, really. One of them was I didn't work round the head shape here, which you meant to. I lifted it up because obviously you can see how much it affects the length even when doing that. Yeah. And I prefer to layer the back through more on a shag haircut. I feel sometimes they're not that layered at the back. And, and like I was saying to you, like that's the area where it's the most hair. Yeah. So it just makes sense that like if we turn her around slightly, like this area here is where it's going to be the most hair. So I've gone ahead and put in a layer that is more balanced horizontally and yes, we sacrifice some length for doing that. But in most cases, when you're layering, you do have to take away a small amount of length. But the colour's quite nice of this mannequin, actually, as well. I did um, just a little purple shampoo on her, and 
There we go. That's about that's about the maximum of my colouring ability, actually, guys. <laughs> Purple shampoo. And, yeah. and it's still patchy, so. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. Um, somebody's asking what mannequin. It's it's a pivot point. It's the Gwen uh, mannequin. Yeah. I like the Gwen. I wish it was a little blonder, to be honest. But um, from from a color and cut standpoint, I think getting a blonder mannequin, not platinum, because um, I really just feel like if you want to do highlights or whatever you want to do, um, when the, the pigment's completely wiped out, it's just a different texture. Um, yeah. And what we've been doing, um, especially for like Brian, um, and I'm sure with Danielle's classes coming up, we color them with a demi down to like a level six, a level four demi, and then we'll do highlights over top of that and then kind of yeah. bring it up. So then the highlights actually showcase through it. So the Gwen has been pretty good. Her price point's not that bad. Um, you know, so, so I would definitely, that would be my choice. What I have used on? Sophia before, which is the one with the shoulders, but they actually comes with a fairly uniform layer effect to it. I think it was like 160 you know, pounds sterling. So yeah. about $200, $250, $220. So, I mean, that's quite unrealistic because you can't really style it either because the hair's not that long. Ingrid is the one that they sell for like £300, which is where, you know, like a lot of the, um, the styling classes, that's what they use is the, is the Ingrid. But the Sophia I use for a few of my shapes, but I I use, um, I, I mean, I love Pivot Point. I think they're the best going and I, I totally get why Matt uses it. I think that sometimes when I'm teaching a class, it can be quite expensive for the salon owner to have to buy it. Yeah, and I think it's good, so, Ben, to talk about this. I know that you're you're lightly treading on this because you're not sure, but Pivot Point <laughs> didn't send us these for free. Like I did pay for them, so it, it, you, yeah. can, you can you okay. can uh, you can be honest. Whatever mannequin, because I know we do yeah. love Pivot Point. Well, I mean, um, I mean but Pivot Point. The, you, you use other There's mannequins no too. Oh I know. Not, not froze again. They can send us mannequins for free, and we will talk about them, but. Um, I know Ben, Ben's treading lightly cause he's not sure if, if, uh, we're supposed to say tons of great things about pivot point. We love them. They are, in my opinion, the best quality mannequin, but I know watching Ben's videos that he uses, oops, I'm going to pop you over to the right. Um, you do use, I, I, I can't ever remember which one that is. Uh, it's called Exalto I use. So okay. I use a couple of um, different ones. So Exalto is one I did this haircut on your day, which... And what does that like come natural level? Like, what is that? This is really quite light. It's a lot lighter than... Um, okay. I mean, I've, I've got a few. But then this is the one that is the platinum one. But um, I did this cut a few weeks back. And... Uh, What'd you color that really with? Is that purple so shampoo? Much hair it, but that was white when it arrived. And it's yak hair. So when I like when I tried to cut in here and blow dry it, it was really difficult to get that to sit nice at the nape. It was just okay. jumping everywhere. But the natural level of of the ones I use, um, it's a French company. They are quite yellowy, but very very light. So when I give it a purple shampoo, they generally go quite a nice color. And um, I said I agree with you totally. Using a blonde one for cutting is great because. Like it, you can see every mistake when you're working with a blonde mannequin. So when I work with a dark mannequin, um, it's better if you're working with a precision shape because you want the outlines to look dense and strong and a dark colored mannequin. But then it's hard to get a really dark mannequin as well because often you get them with like a, almost a slight warm tone. You think, but that's not really what I want. So yeah, yeah I, I, uh, yeah. But they are, I mean, Pivot Point are, I'd say, 100%, not just saying this because I know Matt uses them, they are the best in the world. But yeah, um, they are very, sure. very proud. So, um, but yeah, I mean, like I say, thank you to Matt for supplying them because that was very gracious of him, uh, yeah. to be fair. Well, um, but I hope, I hope I did it justice for what Matt, what Matt would have paid for it. Definitely did. Um, and so, that, so, so when I say to Matt, I, mean, I like to use it more than once. I'm actually thinking, you, yes, you better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah y yes no i i don't care i'll get you fresh ones but yeah i'm I'm really excited because you are going to be doing this with us uh you know hopefully monthly um 
to to just share your stuff. Yeah, yeah, we're... Now, I want to promote you a little bit because you got a ton of things going on. You do have an online, you know, uh, subscription-based. You put out a tutorial every week, right? Um, yeah. And then your book, which I was told in the Virtual Cutting Club today that I need to get copies of your book and I need to sell oh, I've, them. I've sent, I've sent you a... I've actually sent you a free copy. Actually, it's like it's, 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 it's on its way now. I posted it two days ago for you. Oh, that's very so nice. All right. Well, I got to order a bunch from you because people want me to sell it, and uh, so yeah, that they can get it. Well, I mean, easily. the book. I mean, I mean, what's interesting is everything organic is created because you you wish it was there, like your tri razor. Yeah. Like if you look at how useful that is, instead of stopping and picking up a different tool and thinking you've got it in your hand, but that came from you recognizing. It wasn't there. So when when I I retrained, I'm not going to bore everybody here, but I had I retrained myself after maybe 12, 13 years of, of cutting hair. I retrained myself using books and online education because they were really efficient resources, and I, I didn't have the money all the time to really be able to commit to retraining by going to an academy or being trained face to face. So what I did have was every day I had ten or fifteen clients in. And, you know, you know, by having that many clients, you've got time to not practice, but you've got time to try things. You've got time to hone your skills. So I, I, because I use books and on, online education, that's why I've created both, because I, as a consumer, I knew what I was looking for. And the exact product wasn't out there on, on both fronts. There was, there was exceptional books and exceptional online education there, but it wasn't necessarily exactly what I what, what I how I would teach or whatever. I mean, the closest thing to it, of course, is Matt, because that's how I first got in contact with him, et cetera. Yeah, I, love his, I love his style of education. No made up words, just really good, really good, strong terminology. And, but Can I you spell out your because, website real quick for me? And then yeah, my website is bbeducationuk.co.uk. And on there, you'll see my online education and the books to sell. So... My book is called the BB Bible. You can buy it on digital, like uh, Android or iPhone digital copy. It's like, I don't know, maybe 10 bucks. And then you can get it um, hard copy. We, we post it globally. So, um, but yeah, like the whole point of it was that it wasn't out there. So I wanted there to be this really efficient resource. Oh, we're gone. There he goes. I'm telling you guys though, I he sent me the digital copy a while back. It's just haircutting is what it is. Like it's all, um, you know, everybody has their way of doing it. Me and Ben speak very similar in our ways of thinking about haircutting uh, because we were we also have studied so many different people. Uh, everybody's always trying to reinvent the wheel. What I think is great about Ben's book is that he it's just super basic. Um, and yeah. then the diagrams that go into it, it's not like people try to reinvent haircutting and make it more complicated so that they can say that they invented a certain way of haircutting. Um, what I love about yeah. Ben and, you know, is that he's, he oversimplifies everything so that you can literally read his book and start to understand why every little detail, um, from section size to, um, elevations to shape, like all of it makes sense. And even when you did the class with the uh, virtual cutting club with me, um, there was something that triggered in my mind, which was a vertical shape, um, as opposed to just being horizontal shape. Like I always looked at shape as horizontal, uh, and elevation as removal of weight, but I never thought about how I'm moving that weight and that, and the shape that's happening. Yeah. So this is why it's so important guys to hang out with people that push you to make you better. Um, because, you know, just the conversations that me and Ben have, uh, the, the little bit that we do get to kind of hang out online and, and, you know, talk and just watching his content and, and, and adapting it into mine. Like this is how people should work. I think is, um, to just grow each other. So, uh, yeah. I love having Ben here. I'm so happy that, you know, he's part of it. I hope you guys support everything that he's doing. Um, and hopefully he'll get to the U S and do it some in-person stuff, you know, but I did put your website on there. So hopefully you guys took a pen and wrote it down or screenshot it. That's a good way to do it too. And, um, and then you can go check it out. I don't, your book's like 30 bucks too, or something, right? 30 pounds or something. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's all about making it, um, 
affordable and being yeah. realistically priced because I mean it's only about I don't know hundred pages long. It's not it's not but the whole point was I suppose I wanted all of our things I to be a resource that you could use in between clients and between a guest. Um, half an hour before you teach your own team, you can have a little look through that book, make some notes. It's all about being a resource. That was the main thing to me was helping people who were at my stage because I was behind the chair, 14 clients a day, and you know I just wanted to elevate my standards of work. I wanted, I love what I do, and I believe the way I cut her says that about me. But I just wanted to see how far I could go if I committed to it, and I did. And then I, I produced some things that I, I felt you know I had it had within me to produce that would help others. The online education is my favorite thing I do. Um, I had to learn how to edit, learn how to film. Matt's helped me a lot with a lot of that, which has been really, really helpful. And we actually just posted five new videos in the last nine days, which has been great. I mean, just because it's been um, like break in the UK for school. My daughter, we don't have, haven't had to home school for a week. So instead of um, starting arguments for no reason with my wife, uh, which I seem to do. Uh, on, on what I mean, for so. no reason. But I mean, just walk in like it's a sport, but it's immediately like pick a pick a fight for no reason. <laughs> but no, all joking aside, um, thank you all so much for bearing with me, and thank you, Matt, for yeah. being so patient with what's obviously been quite a quite a tricky evening. Yeah, it's fun. I, I had a blast, and we got to work this out. Like from between now and next time, like me and you, we're gonna do some like uh, investigating. Something I need to. That, that was something I need to get. I think that thing you said, the card thing. The yeah, I'm going to send it. To I'll get. send it to you. What, what it send needs. me a link. I'll, get one. No, I'll send you a link. Um, all right, cool. So if you guys, oh, and that, that shag that you just pulled up, the peach looking one or pink one, that's coming up, right? Yeah. That's a tutorial on your thing. Yeah, this is on my site now. Um, so yeah. is the, um, this one. That is, uh, that's online now. That's okay. on my um, tutorial list. And then, I literally did this haircut yesterday, and I edited it. It's all coloured with Moroccan oil, um, their masks. And this was actually a halo section that I did at the top here. And then I sliced it vertical to connect in here. But I sliced it at the front this way and brought everything up. So I face framed it with a vert like a vertical slice. So it's quite, quite that's a nice so funny because that's them. like exactly how I did almost exactly how i did the one back here today so cool it is yeah. great minds yeah it's great so minds. cool because this shaggy you did today here is a little bit different i've cut it i've cut it like that before um but then when i went dry cutting i did more um i was actually talking about one of the guys that you were telling me about um and i was watching oh, no. some instagram stuff and it inspired me oh he's gone but he'll be back in one second now we're just chatting. This is what we do, guys. So you're just really, you can leave if you want. This is, this is what we do. It just makes it easier. We don't have to hang up and then do this. All right. So um, I lifted everything. We went vertical. And then um, based on some of that inspiration from Instagram, it was, a, it was yeah. kind of a chipping technique and then sliding up to start short and oh, work yeah. your way long, which you kind of did in the front of this one. But I did it in a clock around. I took out the yeah. halo section did it in a clock around both sides, all the way around. And then the halo section, we brought all the way forward yeah. over the fringe and point cut that dry, shattered that apart. And then the fringe, we brought out to the front and all of this stuff to the middle and point cut that in front of the face. So very similar. That's great. Yeah. That's really great. I've copied you. That's what I've done. No, I like because I haven't speaking. put it out yet. No, no, I'm just kidding. So whoever, no, hits, I, whoever hits upload first it. copied it's the other one. <laughs> we do we do work very similar which is uh, i flatter myself in saying that so but um, i tell you i love as well is a friend to to free salon education is jacob khan yeah um he's a great uh great cutter great a really great dry cut because like i've always been I, oh, I don't like dry cut because it's not something that i'm very good at i don't know a lot about how to dry cut hair so um but I love watching yourself and like Jacob work and I get a lot of, um, I get a lot of, of useful tips and, and understanding from those tutorials. So it's no surprise you've got such a huge audience because yeah, I got to get Jacob on here too. We should do like great. a, uh, a try, um, 
stream or something. Well, all three cut hair at the same time. That, you know, that me, can't me have technical the, difficulties at all. Like, no. I don't even oh, see how that could happen. <laughs> was me, his, his right hand man is called Ben. Yeah. And we've been saying we're going to have like a Ben off of who's the best out of the Ben's. And nice. um, yeah, so that would be quite fun. You know, it would be fun. We should do that. Fun. I said, to him, as long as you don't mind losing, that's fine. As long as you don't mind, as long as you, you I know, like that, that competitive, I like that competitive edge you got there. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool guys. Well, we're going to let you guys go. Uh, make sure, again, uh, screenshot Ben's website. I'm about to take it away. Um, ben, thank you so much. Uh, always a pleasure. Yeah, I'll talk guys. to you soon for sure. And, uh, and, yeah, so I'll see you. Take care, guys. All right. All right. See ya. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Um, you know, it's always a pleasure hanging with you guys and supporting Free Salon Education, all of that. If you guys want to check out any of the tools that you saw on this show – Ben's using Mizutani, uh, you know, combs, clips, everything for the most part, uh, you can check out on our online store, um, Shop FSE. So if you want to go on there, also um, download our app, FSE Now. You can rewatch all these classes. And that's pretty much it. Thank you to, uh, I think we're live on Minerva Beauty today. Um, I like popping on there. And uh, big supporters of Free Salon Education, um, they've been sponsoring this you know, all my classes for a very long time. So go check out minervabeauty.com. If you're looking for new salon furniture, salon equipment, uh, they've, they're the best in the business. Uh, so go check them out as well. Um, all right. The app wouldn't pop up for me. So Lindsay, all you have to do, uh, it's Adele. Uh, thank you, Adele. Um, the app wouldn't pop up. So if you're having issues with the app, popping up, just go to our website, freesaloneducation.com and just click whatever device you have. So Apple or Android, and it'll take you to the app store and it should be on there. All right. You guys are awesome. I'll see you guys on the next one. Goodbye.